So welcome to the first discussion of what we shall be calling uh, FGZ psychology or fighting game player community psychology. And while there are some other players who have indeed talked to you about what it means to be a player, what it means to have the psychological states and what's going on in the minds of you as a player getting better at these games, but they are not psychologists. And they are certainly not licensed psychologists. But well, you know who is? Your homegirl right here. A licensed psychologist and I've been playing fighting games at a pretty high level for a very long time. Meeting in a variety of capacities internationally and locally. So, I hope that gives you a reason to be like, you know, yeah, we should trust what she has to say. She might have something to cook with. And um, that's kind of part of it. Now, the, the next bit here is I want to give you an idea of the theoretical framework I'll be utilizing here. We're going to be very nerdy to start. Uh, Carl Jung was one of Freud's students in the olden days of psychoanalysis just starting off. And he had this idea called the collective unconscious. Now, within the collective unconscious were what he called archetypes. If you've played Persona 5, or any persona, you are familiar with the archetypes on a rough level that Jungian psychology talks about. It is collective unconscious. Specifically in Persona 5, Mementos is a manifestation of the collective unconscious. Now, what is the collective unconscious? It's our shared understanding and belief and ideas of kinds of people, of kinds of ideas, of kinds of concepts that, now I don't agree with this, but for the sake of describing broadly what Jungian archetypal collective unconscious is talking about, these broad ideas like the hero, like the, the, the goddess, the siren, these are all concepts and ideas we all kind of understand. And Young was before the Cultural Revolution where we were like, you know, cultural context is important. Nowadays, one might say, you, she'd probably say you could map this onto other cultures. I think nowadays we would say, maybe not, but there's still utility in the idea of archetypes. Archetypal existing people, ideas, and concepts. So, what I want to talk to you about in this first kind of foray into the Jungian land of psychology is archetypes of a player. If you can understand what kind of player you have in front of you, you'll be able to make better reads on them more quickly. You'll be able to more quickly categorize who you're fighting, what kind of fire you have, and what you might need to do to go about fighting them more effectively, making better reads. The beautiful thing about this is that we all fit within some characteristics of behaviors. Uh, some of us don't like being risky, so are more likely to play super safe and maybe even passive, potentially. That's going to be one kind of player. And as I go through this video series, I'll be sometimes giving examples of this is the kind of player. This is the kind of emotional state this kind of player might be in. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to be using exaggerated examples. Uh, don't take these as like the hard, like this is the law and now you must follow because Tricky says so. No, um, please tentatively hold on to what I'm saying to you, but don't make it like a, a new thing that you hold too rigidly. Uh, this is just some things I think might be helpful. I'll also be talking about uh, like mental health and how you can more directly use your fighting game playing, translate it to your mental health functioning, and translate your fighting game player game, what you learn and discover about yourself and the way you handle challenges and tie that to your um, regular life your relationships, your work, your, your schooling, whatever area where 
you know, it's important to you. You can translate these ideas from fighting games, from video games more broadly, from competitive playing more broadly to being a more effective and happy person. That's my thesis statement. These fighting games we play, the way we play them, and the way we think about them and ourselves as we go about doing it, I think can be very, very restorative and serves for a vehicle of bettering not just yourself as a player, but yourself as an emotional being. You can better understand who you are. You might even find out who you are through the game, through your understanding of the ways in which you engage with the challenges, with the problems that games present to you, with the ways in which you deal with communities that you learn to be a part of as you play these games. Because, you know, you can't avoid people. So socialization is the heart of the problem. How do you manage conflict? How do you manage, I don't know, dating within the relationship of fighting games or within the community? Because when you are hanging around a lot of people, these things come up. How do you handle politics? Because that comes up too. How do you learn to l spot the difference between someone in good faith having a good discussion with you, frank one, and someone who's probably just trolling? Uh, and someone who might have an agenda that we all have agendas, but one that you might want to be a little more aware of. Uh, I, I imagine this that last point will be relevant forever. So I, I will leave it as vague as that. And I'm sure your viewer, you understand what I'm talking about when I say this. So that's what the plan is. That's what the plan is. Uh, let me continue down here a little bit. Ah, yeah. So I also show no mercy, Tricky. We need to hear this. <laughs> yes. Um, one of my professors and homies, he's a, a rapper, an educator, well, in, in, in the academy. One of his sayings is, stay low and keep firing. What does that mean? It means keep your head down, but keep popping off shots. I intend to stay low and keep popping off shots while being low. Let's continue. So what else are we going to end up talking about here? Uh, this is going to also involve some philosophical stuff. So this won't just be um, how to become a fighting game player, how to get better at fighting games. We're also going to like delve into the, like, what's the philosophy of fighting? What does it mean to engage in this hobby where your goal is to fight and destroy your opponent? What does it mean for you when you have to figure out what your opponent wants to do? You gotta get in their head. You get to get out of yourself, out of your own ego state, and try to enter theirs. I will propose to you at this first video here that in order to better understand what your opponent's intentions are, you will also benefit from understanding what your own intentions are. Through understanding yourself, you will better be able to understand your opponent and you might even find that you'll understand them faster and better and more accurately than they understand themselves because of how accurate your fine-tuned internal sense of self will become. else we have here so yeah you'll you'll ideally make better reads you'll understand the characteristics of the characteristics of a fighting game player talking about the archetypes and for example you could think of how does all this influence someone's risk reward how does your emotional state affect your association with risk reward and then how can you take that to decide how might my opponent react to this next risk putting it in 
putting them in. How might the ring state, the positional state of the ring and our health differential and our health and, and our meters all relate to changing how my opponent might be feeling and how those feelings they might be having relate to the kinds of risk reward decisions they might be prepared to take. And how might you better predict their actions with that information? <laughs> Some topics that will become, we'll go over, not today, but in the future, is what I'm gonna call the Nerf Character Syndrome. I was inspired by the FGC uh, therapist little skit, little comic strip. I think that's a really good one to start with. I might do it today. We'll see. The, the buff character crisis. Low tier mains. You're carried with a uh, choking. What really is choking? And <laughs> the idea of fighting your friend uh, uh, or how you must sometimes kill your best friend in order to progress and that what mentality might help you better fight someone in a very important set that you care very much about. Uh, I think as fighters, we all respect a good fight. And when you are fighting your friend, doing you must destroy your friend, in a sense, we're going to get deep here, you are destroying yourself. You are destroying your ego, your sense of self, and in fully investing yourself in the experience and ecstasy of the fight. And the more high quality you fight each other, the more in which you honor your friend by bodying them and kicking them to the curb. It's it's not a disrespectful thing. Uh, actually, it's quite the opposite. It is the highest honor to say you're my homie i care about you and i care about you so much i want you to experience the best possible fight and i want to give you the hardest set you've ever had against anyone ever that is the highest honor you can give your friend 